After your experiences, who is using multimedia? Uh, multimedia at the moment are being mainly used by people who know something about multimedia, which means cutting out 99% of the population. So at the moment multimedia is still highly elitist technique and it will remain to be so unless public access will be created uh, in most of uh, locations which we go to every day, like shops, like cafes, like everywhere we can meet. But at the moment multimedia it's still confined to techno bohem, as we call it, so for, to people who are interested in it for artistic purposes and patient enough to survive the drudgery and sometimes extremely boring technology which is involved. So it's a combination of a hobbyist and a gamer. A hobbyist, like an artist like us, who spends hours and hours on end trying to find out and learn how to put these things together, how to make them work. Uh, the other significant part of the population which is using multimedia at the moment are people who are serious gamers. So we are talking about population between 15 and 18 year olds, so probably younger. Uh, but uh, they are passive users, they're not contributors. So for the point of view, from the point of view of arts, it's probably less interesting population. But hopefully they will become providers and they will become creative contributors soon. Uh, what's your personal interest in multimedia? Um, my background is uh, ergonomics, so I was interested in multimedia as an educational function rather than necessarily artistic, so I was looking for um, an answer to my problem of democratization of knowledge. Knowledge at the moment, because it changes so fast, has become extremely elitist commodity and less and less people about know about specialist areas. So, uh, working on a number of projects uh, about risk communication, I realized that multimedia is an excellent answer to all my problems. Instead of communicating risk in a linear manner by text, when I'm losing everybody halfway through the paragraph, uh, we could use very simple form of multimedia and uh, originally been involved in designing um, safety multimedia for um, oil platform people with extremely complex, difficult issues which are usually to be put together over two weeks of training can be explained, presented and made highly memorable by use of multimedia over half an hour training. So I've become convict and a complete addict to multimedia from the point of view of what's the value of education, what's the value of compressing knowledge in a minimum amount of time and maximum usability for the non-computer literate user. Uh, multimedia is uh, separated in several sectors like CD-ROM or Internet. You are especially concerned with the Internet. I work with Internet, although multimedia for me means cyberspace. And cyberspace is like every other space, it's divided into parts. So uh, the part which uh, Internet inhabits at the moment is separated from the part which CD-ROM lives in. But uh, I perceive it as being very temporary situation because in fact CD-ROM and Internet, LCDI, which is CDI Interactive, are actually using very much similar techniques and there is no reason why they shouldn't converge. And from my point of view I expect them to converge online, therefore all the information which is available CD-ROM will be available online, maybe the core uh, engine will be offline, but we probably will be seeing a lot of hybrid projects which involve up-to-date information coming from offline and, up, and the core bank on the CD-ROM. But um, I think we're not far away from converging of all the products. So therefore cyberspace for me is it's heterogeneous at the moment, but will be homogeneous fairly soon. Can you tell us something about uh, the Cyber Cafe in London? Cyber Cafe is a project which has got two components. Uh, it's an artistic and social project. Social project because uh, internet access is still limited to people who can afford it, which means uh, buying a PC, buying a modem, paying for a provider, which can easily amount to thousand pounds per month per, per original purchase. It's, it's incredible amount of money, particularly for women. Uh, so we started Cyber Cafe as a way to bridge the gap between the rich and the poor and uh, make sure that this technology is for everybody, that the public access uh, can be created as a precedence. So the democratization of access will be established right from the beginning because the, at the moment UK is still quite early days. So we can make precedences and drag the technology where we want to. Uh, but the other significant component is arts component because I've been on the internet for seven years and every time I'm on it I end up on the west coast of California. It just seems to be that most of art, most of contribution is still coming from California. And lovely as it is and interesting as it is, it's just a separate culture. So uh, we try to provide public space 
which belongs to people in London, people from UK, uh, artists from UK who can uh, contribute to the net but haven't got the skill or the access to server. Uh, but would like to participate in building the cyberspace and making sure that the imagery which is available is the imagery of us all, that is not hijacked by early American pioneers as everything else in life, uh, and that we can fill up the bias a little bit. And uh, we started promoting that presence online for uh, English art, which is slowly happening. Um, and then I got involved with Soros Foundation, which uh, at the moment is disseminating a lot of arts from Eastern Europe, not via online, but we are working on a project together. So the way I would see it, our contribution is to make sure that the bias is um, reinforced, but towards the equality of contribution to the net, not towards you know who is first then takes the most space. <laughs> Uh, could you describe what's going on on a normal day in the cyber cafe? Um, it's pretty chaotic at the moment because it's so full, we're very crowded, there's a lot of a huge demand for that kind of public access, so we're hoping to convert that public space we have into a network of public spaces like that. Um, but people come for ridiculous reasons, you know, sometimes people come for serious research, but a lot of them come for music, for downloading some strange ambient music, which I can't stand personally. Uh, because you can download music on the disc at the moment, so a lot of young people are into that. Um, a lot of older people are developing interest because internet in London, once you pay the setup cost, is actually quite cheap. It's only ten pounds per month. So uh, older people who are retired are looking for getting involved, and there's something like senior net in the uh, states, and we're seeing quite a lot of input from UK at the moment. So we get also, you know, from nine years old who are looking for a database of fast cars to 64-year-olds uh, who are looking for database on gardening. Uh, but most of people are still into communication, so I would say around 70% of traffic from the cafe's email, electronic mail. Uh, so people pick up the mail messages from other boxes or just use it for business or creating uh, P-mail, which is picture mail, the latest craze. Uh, people downloading images from Louvre or from our gallery, manipulating them using Adobe Photoshop and sending them back to someone as a postcard. So it's quite interesting to see because that means that uh, eventually multimedia can be hijacked by normal users and the question of original and the main artist as a provider will probably disappear because people are more and more skilled and the software become more and more accessible for them to create their own input and their own content. So in a way what I see is that our users from the cafe at the moment are being geared up to become providers and contributors to the net. So I'm looking forward that that happens. Do the people have to pay for using the cyber cafe? Uh, yeah, we have access cost, but it's a very low, it's £2.50 per half an hour. Um, so that's pretty much within the lower region of uh, everything else in London costs more. <laughs> Uh, we have very cheap training, we provide a system of training for various levels, for beginners, for advanced and for women only, because we run the Siberia's techno-feminist platform. Um, and that costs £25 for the session, so that's again, we try to maintain very low level of, uh, of fees. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. It was very perfect, yeah. compact and...